and this video will make the neck. So mark your cherry at 24 and a half inches from one end. Install the sled and remove that block. Raise the blade just above the board. And then we're going to cut this at 24 and a half inches. Keep in mind the kerf. You want the mark on the side you want. You can make sure that the board is secure against the back edge of it. It should not rock when you push through, otherwise it could cause a kickback. Alright, turn the blade on and just cut that as normal. Okay, now uh, after you're done with all of your uh, parts, reinstall the, that uh, stop block. And put, the <coughs> put it away, raise the blade, or lower the blade until it's just above the board. And check your board to make sure it's not um, heavily warped. It should sit flat on the cast iron table. And check the quality of uh, the edges. One edge will probably be quite a bit better than the other. And the good edge should not rock against the fence. Okay, you'll notice one side there is a finished cut and the other is what's called a rough cut. And so uh, if you have a board like that, first we need to clean up the rough cut. The rough cuts are pretty rough, and they're not very straight. So notice that that side was just touching the blade. This side has got a quarter inch gap. So find your narrower end, and then move the blade over until the fence over until the blade's just uh, engaging that end. Now here we can't use the um, the featherboard because of the uneven edge. So we're using um, our left hand to keep it engaged on the fence and also pushing it down so it doesn't ride over the blade. So this is called straight lining, turning a rough edge into a straight line. And you notice that off-cut piece that often does get sucked down below and that's perfectly fine. Okay, now check again your quality of your edges. We want the good edge to go against the fence for our cut. This particular board has a knot here, um, and, I, and I'm not showing it, but I removed that knot with another rip. There's one qu um, th thing to, to emphasize is, as you feed the board, it will have a slight tendency to come away from the fence as it passes after the blade. So with your push block, you want to be able to torque it like that to keep that the nose, um, the far end of the board, planted on the fence. So keep that in mind, and you may want to practice that kind of a motion. The rubber bottom on the push block should help you do that. As well, uh, with a long board, it's a little awkward because um, it will tend to ride over the blade. And so with your left hand and with the push block, you want to keep the board flat on the table. So you may want to practice um, how to apply torque to it. Of course, when you start off the table with the block, it's awkward. That's where your left hand is important. So now I'm checking my edges. And the better edge I'm putting against the fence. Okay, we'll set our um, fence to two and a quarter, or slightly more is fine. And then we, remember we, we advance the wood into the blade, pull it back one inch, set our featherboard with moderate pressure. Okay, now since we have a wide board, we have a choice of whether we're going to send the push block down on the left or right side of the blade. And the right answer is it's always you always want to control the piece of wood that is between the, uh, the blade and the fence. That's the piece of wood that could potentially kick back. And it's also the piece of wood we want to control for accuracy. So my, my left hand is holding it down as I start the cut. Once I'm to this point, the push block will hold it down and push through, uh, keeping it against the fence. That off-cut piece will not hurt you as long as you don't touch it. Okay, and then if you're doing four guitars, uh, continue with um, your next neck. Okay, now check the, um, the bow. All solid wood, that is um, not plywood. Plywood will bow as well, but solid wood will almost always have a slight bow. So check um, that the bow is less than 1 32nd of an inch. This one's on the high side. Okay, and that you want to have the concave side 
that is the side with the gap there. You want to label that as the top surface. That'll be the fretboard surface. And the other surface will be the back. So very important to get these correct. Now on that back surface, we want to make a mark three and a quarter inches across uh, the neck. So use a combination square or any similar square to make that mark go all the way across. And okay, this part you'll want to look at, refer to your written instructions in the shop. First we install the miter gauge in the right slot. Then we raise the blade to at least two and three quarter inches. Take the miter gauge, loosen the handle that will allow it to rotate. Also pull the pin that will let you rotate beyond zero. And set this to 15 degrees. And try to get this within a half degree of 15. So you'll see the little red line and you want to line that up with uh, 15 which has that extra angle line coming off of it. And then lock the red handle securely. Make sure that's good and tight. Okay, now we're going to install this clamping block. And this is a 90 degree adapter to let us cut um, shallow angles. First, uh, you notice those holes, those are going to line up with the pins that are on the clamping block. So install that. And then slide the neck in with the back side lined with that little the side with the line on it towards the blade. Take the slop out of the clamp, but don't tighten it fully. You may want to back off about a half turn so that it can slide, but it's not sloppy. Okay, now our, uh, this is a little bit tricky. You want to clamp it such that that line touches the blade when the whole assembly is advanced. So keep on pulling it back here. Now I've Basically, we've got the left side of the blade touching that um, pencil line. That's basically where you want it. You can pull it slightly back further like that. That would be fine as well. And then with that um, aligned, clamp the um, clamping block securely. Make sure that's good and tight. And then check again that it advances and um, touches the line or, or the line will be wiped out. Refer to your instructions again when you're in the shop. Now you want to uh, pull tight the block to the miter gauge to make sure they don't separate. And then feed it through very smoothly and slowly. And in particular, as you end the cut, the effort will go down. You don't want to speed the cut up. So keep the speed of the cut the same all the way through. And once it's cut, don't feed it beyond that. Leave it uh, in that position to turn the blade off. Now you can withdraw your neck. Now it, that's how it was cut, and this is how we'll make our guitar neck. So it's called a scarf joint. And if you cut that um, with everything secure and smooth, you should have a, a joint with no gaps. If you have major gaps, you'll need to see your instructor, and we can fix those. While two of you are cutting the wood, another one or two of you can make the truss rod. So find the quarter by 3 h steel from the stock rack. We should have a lot of this. And mark off 16 inches, and then we're going to cut this uh, off at 16. And you want to orient it, the rod, so that the 3 8 dimension is horizontal. You notice I'm lowering it by hand, and as it engages it starts to vibrate. Just put your hand on it. That'll stop that cut through. And this is, the teeth are, on this cutoffs are pretty coarse. We don't want to orient it with a quarter facing up because then we'll have few, too few teeth contacting. Now go to the disc sander and working on the left side you'll put a chamfer. So just light pressure and rotate slowly. And you can put a double chamfer as I'm showing here to make it a little smoother. Just want to knock off the burr from the saw because that'll interfere um, as it is going to sit inside our um, the neck. Take some simple green and put it on a Scotch Brite pad, and then we want to get all the grime and dirt and grease off of the rod because we need to have a very good gluing surface uh, for it to be installed. So scrub it and um, then wipe off the simple green, and then. 
give it an alcohol wipe. And this will give it a nice uh, glowing, uh, prep the surface for glowing. Okay, now set a caliper to a half inch. I'm using a digital just so you can see it there. Uh, and of course that depth rod will be a half inch out as well. But we're going to set the blade height using the caliper. This is a precise way to do it. But first notice the teeth. You see the teeth have, the tops of the teeth have an alternate bevel. The left and right side are high. So select a tooth with the bevel on the side of your depth rod, the same side raise the blade and then lower the blade slowly so, so we're hooking the caliper on that tooth and then we're slowly lowering the blade until the depth rod touches the uh, insert and that'll be a half inch now set your fence to one inch and this does need to be right on 1.00 it has to be precise okay and we're going to cut the slot for that truss rod so put the uh, scarf joint in towards the blade, lock your featherboard as usual, and then we'll cut the first part of this slot. Now uh, set the fence to anywhere between 1.05 and 1.07. And again, uh, widen the slot. And we're also flattening the bottom of it since those bevel teeth don't cut flat. Now set it to 1.13, and this does have to be precise and um, check the fit now of the rod in the slot. If it fits, great. If it's too tight, then uh, set to 1.14 and cut again.